Hello, and welcome to Kingdom Life Leadership Ministries International. Please join Pastor Mark Copeland and the Body of Christ as we gather together every Sunday for morning prayer at 9 a.m. on site only, and for the Word of God at 10 a.m. on site and 10.30 a.m. online, and for our Wednesday instruction night every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m online and on site. Now, come along as God by His Spirit teaches us from His comprehensive equipment that He uses to shape every life for His glory and use. Praise God. Okay. Praise God. Thank God for all of you uh, that are viewing Wednesday Instruction Night. Let's pray together. Father, how we bless and thank you for bringing us together. We give you praise tonight, Lord, for what you have been sharing with us concerning strongholds. And I pray tonight that you open our understanding, help us to see clearly through the scripture how important it is for us to depend and trust God, how to put our faith in him and our trust in him. Thank you for helping us tonight by your spirit. You will Give us clarity. You'll open our hearts. You'll deposit the truth, and we will be made free. Thank you tonight, Lord, for helping us. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 10 is our base verse. We're talking about strongholds, dealing with them. We have to trust the Lord to help us demolish these called strongholds. We looked at what they are. We looked at a little bit of uh, how they can damage and how they attack the mind through doubt and unbelief. And uh, now I just kind of want to highlight the areas that are mentioned so that you can see the importance within our own lives and our own hearts. Chapter 10 of 2 Corinthians, verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Now, we talked about this is the, the natural life that we live, but it's pointing to a warfare. We see that word war mentioned for the first time. If if you haven't seen it, I want you to know that it's real and that the warfare requires weapons to be used in order to experience victory. He said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. But it's important to know that we do war. It's just the way we war is not in the flesh. You guys get that? He says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We walk in the flesh, but that's not where our warfare is. So he is pointing to a place where there are consistent battles being fought. Then he goes into it, casting down imaginations, the New King James says arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, we said that it takes what is mighty through God to pull down these strongholds. For years, I thought it was something that we could do. You know, you need to pull those strongholds down, right? But the imaginations that are in your mind and the high things, which with the Lord's help, I really kind of want to highlight the high things tonight and how they turn current knowledge that we have about God into something that begins to become a stronghold because we don't believe it. So you remember the last time we were together, we were saying that strongholds take residence in our hearts because of something either that we believe that's not true 
or something that we put our faith in thinking it was going to happen and it didn't. What that does is cre it creates a cave in the mind of thoughts where they don't exercise faith because they were they had an expectation and it didn't happen. Right. It creates a stronghold. So that's why your thinking is so critical as it relates to serving Christ, because you could just get tired of serving God. You know, you could just, you know, I mean, the, the numbers, brothers and sisters, are staggering at the number of people who are in ministry that have just quit. Just, just quit. Just whatever. I mean, whatever they said, okay. But at the end of the day, they're not doing it. And they're not preaching anymore. What happened? Something in the mind that convinced them that, like, God couldn't help them no more. That's called a stronghold. That's not called burnout. Do you understand? So it's not like, you know, I've preached so much. I'm so tired. You know, I just, I've run out of stuff to preach. Uh, no such thing. There's no bottom to the book. You'll die before you preach all of this. You won't get close to preaching all of it. So understand that there's a dynamic going on here. And I'm so glad that it mentions the word war because when you're dealing with issues in the mind, that's what it's like. It's, it's pointing to a battle in the mind that eventually spills over into a war. Now, we've highlighted a little bit about the arguments, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Notice, the casting down has to do with arguments and imaginations. But the casting down also has to do with every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, I'm going to come back to this. I don't have time to go into this tonight, but the book of Colossians was so critical in that region because of so many false teachings that had infiltrated the church, and they were battling philosophies that people were just coming up with. And these philosophies pointed to the arguments and the imaginations and the reasonings that the people had about God in the church. So that's why Paul had, he had to come and deal with the exalted Christ so that he could lift up an understanding of Christ above all these other false teachers that they were beginning to believe in. And they were, it was a battle because uh, I'll have to show you guys later in Colossians. He's going through, he's sharing things, and there is like a flow of him encouraging things. And then he stops and says, beware of philosophies or beware of traditions or watch out for this. Because he knew in his mind that that was something that they were wrestling with, they were battling. And in that church, they weren't winning. Many were being caught away from their faith and just quit serving God because they felt like, Oh, the well, they're saying over here that that, you know, it's about, you know, how you're exalted in your thinking. And I didn't finish high school. So I don't think I can be saved. You know, it's just some kookamame, you know, thing that they started saying and people start believing it and leaving the church, walking away from their belief in God. So Paul comes back and deals with the exalted Christ in Colossians. So that's what I want you guys to see. That's the battle. You know, arguments that you have to cast down, philosophies, ideologies, concepts that may have worked when you were in the world. But now that you come into Christ, those things have to be even that those concepts should clash with Christ. There's a new way this life is manifested, and it's not what you think. This is what so many people in church get confused about. They think that they can use their old mind with this new man. Mm -mm, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And so, so, so what will happen is, right, you'll, you'll have a sense in your spirit that you're doing the will of God. 
right? But because of a stronghold, you'll second guess yourself. Like, uh, man, I know that's what God said, but, you know, but what about such and such? You know, you'll just think of something to just reconsider the truth that you know. That's a stronghold. That's a stronghold. So, so it's not like, you know, I used to think, brothers and sisters, that, like, you could just go back through the Rolodex in your mind and identify stronghold. Oh, there go one. Get out of here. I don't believe that no more. I'm with Jesus. You know, it doesn't work like that. You really do have to take time to examine your heart to see, is the way I'm thinking the way Christ wants me to think? That's what you got to ask yourself, because you can't assume the way you think, well, that's the way God wants. He wants me to think this way, so, you know, I can't help it. I have guys on my mind all the time. You know, it's just the way he wired me, you know. I don't know about nobody else. No, bro, there's a stronghold there, sis. Come on. There's more to life than just guys and how cute they are and the green eyes and the good hair. Right? But in certain people's minds, that's that when they think of the opposite sex or whatever, an image comes that comes from their heart, the way they view the opposite sex. What if that's corrupt? And then you get saved. You come into the things of God. That mindset has to be evacuated completely or or it will infringe on your walk with God. I'm telling you guys, strongholds are nothing nice. So here's what I want you guys to see. Casting down imaginations and also casting down high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Now, you got to watch this one because this is not the person exalting the thing above the knowledge of God. No, that high thing exalts itself against what you know about God. So you have to watch certain things because, you know, that's why these, man, I'm telling you guys, man, these, these fake encouragers and motivational speakers and stuff, they are just assassinating the gospel because people are thinking they need that in order to motivate them. You don't need any motivator other than the one who lives in you, who is Christ. He's all you need. And any attempt to depend on anyone else is an infringement upon that relationship that you have with God. He takes offense. So here's what I want you guys to see. High things must also be cast down. Now, I want to show you the importance of these because it's, it's kind of hard to look through a window and see how damaging high things can be. But I want to show you from this context in the Old Testament. Now, turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 15. I just want to show you how dangerous the strongholds are, or in this case, the high places. The high places in the Old Testament were a type of strongholds in the New, because it's where people hid, it's where things happen, it's actually where a lot of worship went on of false gods. It would happen in the high places. So in uh, 1 Kings chapter 15, you can see this in the life of these kings that a lot of times they quit following God because of their worship. They had things going on, but... They lost track of God because they got caught up in false worship. 1 Kings 15, and I want to look at verse 35. 1 Kings, where, let's see, that's not, no, that's not 1 Kings. Let's see, maybe it's 2 Kings 15. I just wrote the verse down. Let me see here. I don't think it's 2 Kings either. I don't think there's 35 verses, so. Uh, yeah, it's Second Kings 15. Sorry, not First Kings. Second Kings 15, and we'll start at verse 32. And it's talking about the reign of certain kings and, and their worship. This is King Jotham. In the second year of 
Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel. Jotham, the son of Uzzah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jersha, the daughter of Zadok. Hmm. Zadok was part of the priesthood, for those of you that didn't know. That's why a lot of people think Melchizedek came out of the priesthood of Zadok. Melchizedek. They believe that that's the priesthood that was changed, that it was no longer after the order of Aaron. With Jesus, it was after the order of Melchizedek. This priesthood, Zadok, was believed to be um, the priesthood that he came out of. However, notice, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, verse 34. He did according to all that his father Uzzah had done. However, verse 35, the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burnt incense on the high places. He built up the upper gate of the house of the Lord. So what it shows is they had a righteous king, but because the high places hadn't been cleared from the previous reign, they still worshiped as though they were serving a foreign god. Do you understand? So, so this king, he started reigning at 25. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to his father Uzzah. Now, I believe his father is the same Uzzah that died, and Isaiah saw the Lord in the same year in Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. So he says, however, the high places were not removed. So the people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. So the high places is where the worship was done. And what it did was it established in the high places or in the heavenlies that God reigns in this region or in this area. I want to say, brothers and sisters, that it's the equivalent of darkness releasing principalities to rule over governing cities. It's similar to that as it relates to the high place, especially when there's uh, idol worship going on in the lands. The people, like, aren't notified that that regime is over, so they still worship those false gods. Why? The high places weren't cleared out. So the worship didn't change from the previous reign. So whoever was before King Jotham, I think it was um, this king right here, um, Pika. He ruled for 20 years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, who made Israel sin. So the way they worshiped and what they had set up, they set up in the high places. So that even after that king died, they got a righteous king. But it's like the people haven't been notified. You understand? So they're like, well, like, so does he worship God or do we, so what do we do? So out of religious habitation, they continue to worship from the previous reign. I hope you're able to see that until the new creation takes up residence, you will still worship out of the old Adamic nature. It doesn't just go away. So what you used to serve before you got saved was an idol that was set up in your mind as a high place. And now that Christ has come in, it conflicts with what you understand about everything related to the old life. Just understand that. Christ is trying to break through with an understanding. This is why you do this. This is how you grow. This is how the Word of God does this. You know, the Holy Spirit does this, you know. And you're like, well, I, I, don't, I don't get it. 
you know, it doesn't make sense, you know. What blocks your understanding more than anything else is the old mind. It's not automatically converted. We think, well, I'm I'm a different person because I go to church, and you know, I just notice my attitude is different. That's great, but there's stuff up here that's the same. Like if you have phobias, like you you scared of black cats, you don't like like open umbrellas in the house, and or if you break a glass, you actually believe that you're gonna have bad luck for seven years. But you've received Jesus, right? And the pastor of your church is trying to encourage you to just, you know, move on with Christ, you know. But he, you know, but you're like, ah, a black cat, you know, it's gonna happen, I'm, you know. And it's like, no, you know, you're in Christ now. Just believe, you know, trust God in the Scripture and everything. But see, your mind can't handle that. You don't know nothing about that, you know. This Jesus stuff is new, and that cat is over there at the corner. I'm gonna kill him. You know, or whatever. It might be something, you know. Uh, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. Some people, snakes, spiders, whatever. Like, you know, ladies, I mean, guys, we got to kill it no matter what. We shouldn't be letting our wives kill that stuff, you know. If she got the slipper, just give it here. You're going to splatter them all over there. Give me the thing, you know. So we got to do that. But what I want you guys to see is that because of your previous life, those things are locked in your mind. They're locked. God, by his spirit, listen, brothers and sisters, please understand this. Look, strongholds are not going away immediately. I have to tell you that. Sometimes it takes time to unravel some stuff because, you know, you know what, brothers and sisters, some of the stuff that we believe could be tied to our childhood. You know, it's like your dad or your mom just told you something and you just believed it, but it wasn't true. It was true because your mother said it was true. But you found out later it wasn't. Or it contradicts your understanding of Christ. So you have to violate a family principle that's lasted for years. And you have to because you got a new mind in Christ now. It's not the same old mind that you had. Nothing against mom or dad. But now you follow the word of God instead of these little potions and formulas that he gave you. Right? Come on. I had some too. But we, listen. Everything comes and bows to the word of God. Now, this is what happened with this king. The high places weren't removed, so the worship didn't change. Now, look at 2 Chronicles chapter 11. Similar with this king. 2 Chronicles chapter 11. And then we'll look at how we can get rid of them because we have to, we have to look at how they can be demolished. 2 Chronicles 11. We'll look at verse 13. Second Chronicles chapter 11, we'll start at verse 13. Second Chronicles 11, verse 13, we'll read down to verse 17. And from all their territories, the priests and the Levites who were in all Israel took their stand with him. For the Levites left their common lands and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had rejected them from serving as priests to the Lord. Then he appointed for himself priests, notice, for the high places, for the demons, for the calf idols which he made. Where did he put those things? In the high places. Do you see that? So, And after the Levites left, those from all the tribes of Israel, Set, such as set their heart to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdoms of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong for three years because they walked in the way of David and Solomon for three years. But notice what hindered them, the high places. The high places. The high places dictated not only the worship, but the behavior of the people in the land. So it was really important. Hey, brothers and sisters, I'll share with you real quick. Now, not, a lot of people don't know this, but do you know that the whole thing with 
homosexuality, lesbianism, all the things that is now a movement began at first just in the minds of some. But when those minds come together, now we have what God dealt with in Genesis 11, when those people came together and said, we're going to build a tower to God. And God had to come down and confound their language because they were one. I want to help you guys see, this is how principalities establish rule and authority over cities. The collective thought of those that live there rules the city. That's how principalities. So he says, for we wrestle not against principalities, powers, what else? Rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness where? High places. So do you know what God is trying to do with us? Establish worship so we can dethrone the devils in the high places and get righteous rule in the land. Now, I know we think the land should change because of who we vote for. No. You could, hey, brothers and sisters, you know what would mess up all the righteous candidates? If we found all righteous candidates and we voted and they won and we're celebrating, do you know the land wouldn't change until they went up in the high places and changed some of the stuff that we believe? It would stay the same with righteous people because of the thought life of those that are now gone. You have people say, oh, we need to appreciate. Hey, check this out, y'all. Why are we still celebrating what we suffered on 9-11? We suffered. We saw that happen. Every year they show it as a memorial. As you can see here, the same plane went into the building. Why do we keep showing? Do you know how many people die? Do you know how many people have to relive that every year? Every year. We ain't thinking about them. We can't destroy, we can't cast down the stronghold of what happened to our nation because we're too arrogant to think that something like that can happen to us. So we got to play it over again. We don't realize what we're doing to the families. Every time we replay what happened on 9-11. What was going on with you when it happened? I never forget. I woke up. I was calling somebody. I was trying to set up meetings. And, and, and the sister we were with the finance team went. She's like, I said, what's going on? She said to me, just turn on the TV. I'm like, what channel? She said, just hit the on button. I couldn't believe what I saw. And immediately... My heart was grieved because you see people perishing at the impact of planes into a building. There, there's no, where are you going to run? It hit on your foot. That's it. Like, like that, you're gone. Without you can do nothing. You look, you turn around, you hear about it. It's people trying to get out of the building. Like that. Like that. Now, brother and sister, if you pass without you knowing unexpectedly, that's one thing. But if you see your doom in front of you, okay, we'll move on to something else. Just want you guys to understand that strongholds, they establish the entire thinking scheme of the people that live in the city that live in the area. That's why churches are so important. you got to have a church in every neighborhood because that church could establish the reign of Christ as it relates to worship, set up worship there in the high places of that city. And that city can know from the mayor on down, Jesus is Lord. Over this city, Jesus is Lord. We don't worship another God. We don't worship false gods. We worship Jesus. And we go in the high places and establish that as a throne in the city. God will honor it. And you know what it'll do, brothers and sisters? It'll handle crime in the city. That's how you deal with crime. It's a spiritual warfare. 
You can't keep passing and legislating laws where you, you know, the three strike rule and then you stop it. Then you let people out. Oh, we let them out and then you get everybody else. And then see the laws of the land, brothers and sisters, they're not in sync with what we believe as a people because of the high places. And now America is a nation, we don't know what we believe. Everybody's a Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you're going to have a white shirt on talking about you got to do a two-year mission because you're confused. It's another Jesus. It's a different stronghold in the mind. Those people need to be delivered from error. They're not just going to change. They're not. They're not. They're studious. They study. They just study the wrong thing. Brothers and sisters, we think theologians are just so on it, they can't make mistakes. But some of them can't stay married. Now, you study the Bible, you got to walk with God. And you live like a hermit, all you do is study the scriptures, and you can't stay with somebody? What's up with that? I thought you loved God. They do love God. Just no one ever taught them how to have a prosperous marriage, how to build your home. You know, you got families that are, the, the wife is going to school and the husband go to school and then both of them go to school and everything. Who's raising the kids? Somebody else is raising the kids. Hey, I know, get your degree. Go do what you got to do. But be careful who you let raise your children because they could be an environment where those little people are developing strongholds at an early age so that now they start coming home and saying no to mommy. Yeah, we're going to break you up in that stronghold tonight. You say yes. Every time we say something, just say yes. That's how, that's how, that's how you can avoid conflict. Just never say no. No, mommy. No, daddy. What was that? Oh, you mean yes, dad. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh-huh. So that it doesn't develop a stronghold and you start getting used to it. So that no now at six becomes shut up at 16. And now you, my dad say, now you didn't become somebody else. <laughs> Ooh, miss him. Hey, y'all, check this out. There's another one here in, um, let's see, chapter 14. Verse 3, these are reigns of kings, and as they're coming in, they can establish the entire worship to kind of set the direction for the, for the city. 14, verse 3, Asa, verse 2, did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God, for he removed the altars of the foreign gods and the high places and broke down the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to observe the law and the commandments. Verse 5, he also removed the high places and the incense altars from all the cities of Judah, and the kingdom was quiet under him. Why? No more strongholds. So, brothers and sisters, when the strongholds are dealt with, guess what you have in your life? Peace. And it's amazing how many people don't have peaceful thoughts. You know, it's like, oh, just think of something peaceful. Good luck with that. If you've established strongholds in your mind, they bother you because the truth that you carry in Christ conflicts with it. You got to change the way you think. So that's why the scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but what do you do? Be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. Now, here's something that dawned upon me the other day, brothers and sisters, in closing out one more verse here, and then we'll pray, is that the word renew, you know, I hear it so often, I hear it so many times, you know, I'm going to something, I just need renewal and all this other kind of stuff. And the Holy Spirit said, you know, son, renewal is established first from what I do in you that's new, renew. It means 
that you were new at some point, and now I got to redo it. But someone who's never been new can't be renewed. I hope I'm making sense. So if they've never been new, they can't get renewed. No, they've never been new. Only those who have been new and then something happened, they drifted or got off or something, right? God can bring them back to a place where they're renewed, like the Bible says in uh, Ephesians 4, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I think it's around verse 23, right? What it says is your mind has been new before, and now it can be renewed in the spirit of your mind, which is your attitude. That's in Christ. If you change your attitude, your spirit can receive something fresh from God. You just got to change your perspective on it. Now, that's for those in Christ. You can't tell your girlfriend that that's lost. She not, it ain't going to work for her. We assume everybody can follow what we follow, but they're not born again. Then it won't work for them. So that's why you got to be careful. You're encouraging all these people on Facebook, and very few of them know the Lord. They encourage you. They'll quote a scripture. But you don't know what their level of understanding is in the things of God. You don't know. You don't know where they are. Some of these people, they hate pastors. They hate leaders. They hate church. Some of them, they just hate authority. They want to do their own thing. Then they come and impress babies who don't know the intricate details of being in leadership. You know, they just like what Sister Girl got on, right? She just tight, her stuff, her hair, whatever, right? That's what drew you. It wasn't God saying, go follow her. God ain't going to tell you to leave a pastor and go follow some life coach. No. No, that's not God. You're being deceived. And I dare say there's something in your heart towards the church that they're saying you don't need it. And it's confirming in your heart because in your heart, you're done with church. See, so the enemy, I'm telling you, he's masterful at hearing what you voice that you don't like. And he can easily bring people around you that don't like that either. And next thing you know, all you guys hate the same thing. It's like, isn't it funny? I hate that unit too. Oh, my God, I can't stand that either. Next thing you know, those people in the church just somehow just start flocking together. And then a leader rises up in their midst and says, now, you know, you guys don't say anything. But I overheard the other day. I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't tell you guys, you know. There's something about the pastor or a leader or something, right? And they share it with those innocent lives that are just discovering who they are in Christ. And like that, their spirit gets corrupted. From that moment on, what you told them about that leader, pastor, whatever, they start looking at him through a different lens. Because all they can hear is that lie that that person told them that created a stronghold in their thinking towards that person. And now, for no reason, they could just not like him because of false information that they got from somebody that goes to the church, been there longer than you. I'm telling you guys, that's how this works. You'll be wondering, man. You'll be pouring into people, loving on people, and then in their heart, they can't stand you. And you just don't know. You'll be like, dang, what's wrong with them? The pastor could never figure out that what they heard from some one of his leaders, now they look at him differently. They don't see him as a man of God. They don't hear God speaking to them. They can't help but think about that's locked in their mind, what that person told them, and it's not even true. That's how easy we stop liking people. That's why strongholds are dangerous. You got to check your heart. You can't have nothing in your heart towards nobody. You have to constantly check. It's like somebody does something to mm, I know you ain't going to. Mm, I, I mean, like that, your mind starts running. At that moment, you got to forgive. Just like that, right there on the spot. Lord, I released him. Lord, I released him. So that my heart knows we're not holding anything against what we just heard from that person. We're free. Now, somebody has something against you, that's their business. 
right? But you make sure you're not reciprocating that because that's from a stronghold. Now, these strongholds, brothers and sisters, exalt themselves. Do you see that? These were in the high places. And then the last verse I'll give you guys is um, 15, 17. And this is um, King, let's see, I forget who. I think this is King Asa. He did an awesome, uh, there was an awesome reformation that took place in his reign. And in uh, chapter, uh, verse 17 of chapter 15, the high places were not removed from Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was loyal all his days. But see, brothers and sisters, he struggled because the high places weren't taken care of. Turn over to 17 and look at verse 6, same with Jehoshaphat. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, verse 5, and all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat, and he had riches and honor in abundance. And his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he removed the high places and the wooden images from Judah. It's pointing to the reign of certain kings when they're falling deeper in love with the Lord and their reign is righteous. It seems as though they established worship in the high places in order to continue that righteous rule. That's what it seems like. That whatever's going on in the high places is really dictating the direction of the nation and whoever's reigning. You guys see that? Okay, so go back to um, go back to uh, Second Corinthians, and we'll close. And I'll just share a couple things with you guys as it relates to the high places. Very, very interesting. Now I want to come back and cross-reference, I won't be able to do it tonight, but I want to come back, and as the Lord helps, I want to be able to cross-reference um, each one of these strongholds with something modern that the enemy uses today to confuse us as New Testament believers. Now, the high things tend to aggressively shift your attention span to themselves. That's why the Bible says high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. So you're not taking this high thing and exalting it. No, the high thing itself, when it comes in knowledge, it's saying I'm higher than God. You guys missed that one. Casting down imaginations. Awesome. You can handle reasonings and imagination. But these high things come, and they kind of bogard their way in the, in the mind. You have to watch them. Well, I don't care what nobody say. That's just how I am. High thing. You don't even know yourself. Why are you sharing about a behavior that is not you? It's something you like that makes you go that way. I don't know if y'all tracking with me. Let me let me see if I can close this out. High things can also manifest in the form of intellectual ideas or multi-million dollar opportunities or lofty proposals that if you don't get this, you're going to miss out forever. High things. High things. You let the person with the briefcase come over and convince you that if you don't take this plan, you're an idiot, you're foolish, and there's no way you'll prosper when you get older. Which any babe in Christ knows that's not true. I'm supposed to believe God now, and God is obligated to prosper me because he promised to give me his peace, and his peace is his well-being over my life. So. Where I want to be in five years may not align properly with God's will. So tell him to take his briefcase and go home. You're not interested. But pastor, we're going to hurt his feelings. You should. You serve the Lord. You don't let people come in and dictate a plan for your life. You gave your life to Jesus. You don't trust God? Why would you give Jesus your life and then take it back later? 
Don't take it back. Let him guide you. Let the Lord lead you. Brothers and sisters, sometimes God isn't ever in a position to lead us because our high places just take over our thought. Ah, uh -uh, don't you do that. Go over there. No, don't do that. God won't like that. God's going to be mad at you. You know, you know, brothers and sisters, the times that we think God is mad at us are probably times that God isn't mad at us. You ever thought about that? Where in Scripture does it say at any point that God gets mad at his children? Show me. Show me. God gets mad at the wicked. He's only angry at his children because that's how they're acting. They're acting out of character. They're not wicked. He redeemed them. But the strongholds in their mind have convinced them that they're no different than these over here. They just don't know. So it's important, brothers and sisters, that you identify these things and that you begin to bring them to the Lord. Now, Pastor, how, what do we do once we identify? Now, we talked a little bit about the arguments, high things. We're coming back to deal with the thoughts. The thoughts have to be captured. But now, here's the first thing. First of all, you come before God and admit, Lord, I've identified an area in my life where my thoughts are contrary to what I understand about you. Something has exalted itself above what I know about you. Something is trying to convince me that I'm going to stay broke. And yet I keep reading verses where you want to prosper me. And it's giving me a migraine. You bring that to God and lay it at the cross. Admit, Lord, this is a stronghold. That's the first thing you do. Admit. Search your heart. If there's ways of thinking, patterns that you have from the old life, admit those to the Lord. Bring them to the altar. And the next thing to do is renounce them. Say, Lord, that was part of the old me. I don't live that way any longer. That part of me is dead. It's done. That's not me anymore. Brothers and sisters, the biggest battle that baby Christians struggle with is how the enemy does all that he can to convince you that the experience of God that you just had, it wasn't real. When in actuality, it was real because of the way God gripped your heart. Like, he couldn't convince me of that, right? He had to come at another angle because the way the Lord grabbed my heart, I left there knowing I'm saved. I, if I don't know nothing else, I know that. It was sealed in my heart that night. It was sealed. So for somebody, I was still shaken because I couldn't prove scripturally that I was saved. But they shared enough with me so that when I left, it sealed my heart to know I have been born again tonight. My new birthday is March 26th, 1983. That's why I never forgot it. It was ingrained in my thinking because of what happened to me. Now, I had to get understanding about what I believed. But what I had believed that night in Jesus, it was real. It was real. I'm telling you. So the enemy came. He attacked, man. He's coming. Brothers and sisters, listen. The devil is nobody that you want to play with. He don't care nothing about you. Like, he can't be sympathetic to your issue because he hates so incessantly that he doesn't really care anything about you. He just can't stand you because you belong to God. Now, that's, a, that's beyond crazy, okay? That, that's just beyond. That's beyond going up to a school and shooting people. It's the spirit of it that's wicked. It's the spirit of it. Whether you catch the shooter or not, the fact that it was in his mind to take people out means darkness had accomplished the will of the dark prince ruling that city. And he found somebody to execute his plan that would demolish a number of souls at once. Anytime you see that, it's a devil. It's a devil. I don't care what you say. I don't care how you look at it. They can go back and look in his house and see what kind of music he listened to and say he listened to acid rock or he listened to this. At the end of the day, a demon was directing his steps to cancel numerous lives at once. That, brothers and sisters, is demonic in its nature. 
So know that whatever he was thinking about, he started believing to the point where even if it meant executing lives, I got to go do this. I got to go do this. Now, question in closing. Can we legislate something that will stop people from thinking like that? That's my point. We're talking about a battle that's spiritual. What are we going to do, brothers and sisters? These people don't believe that it's spiritual in nature. And more and more people are going to die. We're going to take the guns. That's how we're going to win. They'll find something else to kill people with. Before guns, there was knives. And there was some people that could use knives, a switchblade, a razor blade, and slice you up. I'm telling you. So, but why do that now? I just could point this at you. I don't have to work out. <laughs> it's just, you know, I, you know, it's a mindset. Everybody says, I'm buying me a gun in case ain't nobody going to roll up on me. I don't think that way. I'm not doing anything that will cause somebody to roll up on me. Secondly, I serve God. If they can roll up on me and kill me, then it was in God's plan for me to go home. And I don't think I'm done yet. So I'm not afraid of somebody rolling up on me. Why y'all looking at me like that? Some of y'all afraid, huh? <laughs> so you're gonna start you're gonna start wearing a bulletproof vest to Safeway. And just in case, you never know. That's fear. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hey, brothers and sisters, when the disciples were opposed, they came back to one another and said, Hey, you guys, we were persecuted today. It was cold. What about you guys? No, not yet. But we're hoping to tick off some religious leaders by next week. They came back and discussed how God had given them favor in the midst of a council that beat them and talked about everything. What are you guys doing? It's like, look, you determine whether or not we're supposed to do it. But we can't help but do the things which we have seen and heard. And if you let us go, we're going to do it again because something happened to us that we can't keep quiet about. And I'm so convinced that I need to do this, that even if you decide to kill me, to die is gain. Now you think about that, brothers and sisters. You think about the level of your little commitment to the Lord and how they felt about their own lives. They didn't even value their life anymore. And brothers and sisters, you can't do nothing to a person that ain't afraid to die. Ain't nothing you can do to them. You threaten to kill them, whatever. you like, so do it. You know, we see that in, in killers and people that live. They don't know they're going to hell, but I'm talking about God's people. That no, on the other side, I'm going to wake up in God's presence. Go, on, man, do your best. Do your worst. I can't wait to see him anyway. That's, that's how they thought, brothers and sisters. They turned the lions loose on them and everything. They didn't know that that persecution was creating more and more decisions for Christ. People were cheering when they saw him get slaughtered. But when they were going home, they were talking like, what kind of courage and boldness? What did Jesus do to them to where they could lay their lives down like that? Who is this Jesus? Bam, they meet him. Next thing you know, two weeks later, they're in the same situation as the people they went to cheer to be killed by lions and stuff. It caused a revival. I want us to pray tonight, brothers and sisters. This is something that you need to consider for your own life. This is something that you can't just wish will go away. This is part and parcel of your cultivating a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And what you're presenting to him is how you think. And if we would be honest with ourselves, brothers and sisters, 
some of us know, the way we think most times, it's not Christ-like. The stuff we think about, most of the thoughts that we get are negative. Why aren't they positive thoughts? Because a stronghold has convinced you, God ain't coming through for you on that. You're on your own on that one. You created that debt. God ain't going to help you get out. It's a lie. It's a lie. Who said God ain't going to help you? If the devil has convinced you that God ain't going to help you, you're hopeless. You're hopeless. Did you eat today? You ate? Good food? Good meal? God provided that for you. So obviously he ain't that mad. You ate. Were you protected? Anything happened to you? Anybody have to help you put on clothes? Anybody have to put on little fuzzy slippers on your feet because you couldn't reach your toes? No, you got up out the bed on your own. Praise God. That was mercy. It's new every morning. Did God require anything of you? Did he require an offering to wake you up? No, he's just good. He's good all the time. So I want us to pray, brothers and sisters. You can take inventory and say, Lord, if there are strongholds in my life, help me. Don't let them block your will. Don't let them block me believing and trusting you that you can help me. I want us to pray together. You look in your own life, brothers and sisters. You check out your own heart, and the Holy Spirit can surface those high places, high things, concepts, ideologies that just are in opposition to God. You know what they are. The Holy Spirit will surface them. He'll shine the light on those areas. Just admit and renounce them. And then the last thing we're to do is to repent, change the way we think. We're fortifying our hearts with healthy thoughts in the scriptures. That's why I bury myself in the Psalms. Whenever I come, whenever I come, confronts me, uh, whenever something bigger than me is confronted, sometimes I go to David and Goliath. I just say, hey, he had five smooth stones, and man, Goliath wasn't circumcised. This whole situation doesn't show God. It must be an uncircumcised Philistine. Lord, I believe you're going to slay him in Jesus' name. There are always options that you have based on the quality of the battle that you face. And at the end of the day, you got to believe God. Look to the Lord. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to minister to these that are here tonight, these that are on the line. Lord, the nature of this warfare requires us to trust that these are, our, our weapons are mighty through God. Our weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing. Father, would you search our hearts and as we admit to things that could be part of false worship from my previous life, how I felt about men, how I felt about women, how I felt about this or that or whatever, Lord, if I had indifferences in my heart, Lord, would you forgive me? I submit those things to you now. I come to the cross to lay these things before you. My heart, my mind is, is wired a certain way. Lord, when I get money, I just, I get afraid. I don't know what to do. Lord, when I, certain things happen, I, I get fearful. Help me, Lord. I don't want to just cringe in fear. Help me to remove these strongholds, Lord, with your power. Cast them down so I don't have to be afraid anymore. I don't have to doubt or, or exercise unbelief. I can just know that everything's going to be all right, that you've helped me before, Lord. There's no reason why you won't help me in this situation. I'm pleading with you, Father. I need your help. Have you asked the Lord to help you? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, a stronghold could be you just know how to do something, and you don't inquire of the Lord. You're just going to do it, and you know how to do it, but you never ask God. You just never brought it to him. It was just, you, you just ran with it. You didn't, you didn't inquire. You can at least inquire, Lord, is this okay? Can I do this, Jesus? Is this all right? Because if I do it and I'm not sure it's what you want, I could be creating in the high places a belief that could come back and injure me later. So, Father, we bring these things before you. We ask that you 
please give us mercy. Help us to just lay these things before you, whatever they are, Lord. There was a time we thought they were good for us. It was a time that we were doing things we thought they might help us. But we're seeing in Scripture that the high places are in our thoughts, in our minds, Lord. Sometimes before we can even believe, we already have an answer how you can't come through. That's a stronghold. That's a stronghold. All things are possible to them that believe. If I believe, Lord, my possibility is based on whether or not I can believe you. So, Lord, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Would you watch over the minds and hearts of these that are here tonight, Lord? They need a protective covering around their minds so that the enemy can't just plant something that's not true. That's a lie. That's false. That's going to redirect their steps, Lord. Encourage them and help them to stay in the Scripture so that the Word of God can be a light to their path and a lamp to their feet. Lord, you can lead them by using the Word of God. Holy Spirit, please involve yourselves in this guidance. Sometimes it's so difficult to discern what God wants to do. It's an instant thing. We got to make a decision, and we're just not sure. Help to guide our steps. Help us to discern or just say, let me think about it over the weekend. Let me pray about it. I'm not going to make a quick decision. I need to talk to God. I can't make that decision yet. I have to talk to the Lord. I'm not going to create a stronghold in my life. I need to talk to the Lord. I don't know what to do. Give me a minute. Don't ever feel like you got to be pressured to respond. You got to do it now. You got to do it now. Hurry. No. I need to pray. I need to ask God, Lord, is this your will? No, that's not me. Get out of that. Okay, now I know what to do, and I'm going to obey. Brothers and sisters, don't make assumptions. They could be false assumptions. It could set you back five to seven years. So don't just jump out there and just jump at stuff that looks like a good idea or seems right. Or they were nice when they knocked on the door. No, say, wait, no, I discern this isn't God. No, you guys aren't talking about the same Jesus. No, you can't come in. We don't need to talk. I'm already being taught the truth in the word of God. I thank God for my pastors and my leaders. Y'all can't come in and corrupt my mind with something that ain't in the Bible. Y'all talking about a kingdom don't have no king. No, I'm going to stick with what I have in Christ. I've taken the yoke of discipleship, and I'm learning of him. And that's sufficient for me right now. Lord, would you help us tonight? These that are watching, wherever they are, Lord, we don't know what fellowship they're connected to, what belief they're in, but I pray that you direct them to a place where they can receive the truth of the word of God. They can fellowship with those of like precious faith. Lord, they can mature in the things of God and not stay babies for the rest of their spiritual lives. Grow them up, Lord. Direct them to a place where they can mature in Christ. And then help us here, Lord. There's so much that we're learning. It sounds new, but it's just new to us because you're revealing it later. Help us, Father God, by demolishing these strongholds, these things in our thinking, traditions, different things, Lord, that we might do, that our family might do. You know, Kwanzaa, all these things. Father, is this in, in sync with your will? Those cultural things that we do and how we celebrate our cultures, Lord, is that in keeping with your will? Is that a stronghold I'm creating in my heart? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is chief in my heart. So, Father, search my heart. Am I secretly attached to somebody else, a stronghold? My candidates? Help me, Lord. The only candidate, the only person that I need to depend on is Jesus. No candidate, no politician can give me peace. Only Jesus can. So thank you for helping us, Lord. We're in the midst of a society that's a confused world. And the thrust and the push may not be in keeping with your will. 
So, Father, lead us. People are trying to authenticate who their candidate is. Lord, cause your people to just trust you. We have to trust you, Lord. Like always, somebody is going to put too much faith in a person, and they're going to be let down. And that person is a devil, and they're wrong and everything. Lord, we've seen it too many times. Can we just stay focused on God? He who rules the nations. Will you help us, Lord, to keep our faith grounded and rooted in you? Then it won't really matter. We believe that you can bring the change that's needed in our nation. We're praying and talking and asking you to help. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing our prayer. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We thank God for all of you that are viewing tonight. We want to remind you that we'll be back this Sunday by God's grace. We want to also admonish you to tune in to the Bible study this coming week. It's an exciting study that's going to begin in uh, the book that we're going through, Devotions of a Disciple. We're about to get into some good stuff on soul winning. So please, you don't want to miss it. This is going to be something that is going to thrust us into what God has ordained for us. It's important that you catch some of these principles that are being shared out of the word of God. I'm telling you guys, it's going to be a great blessing to you. Once again, God is going to put emphasis on how important the soul is and why we're really here on the earth. So we encourage you to, to join us. Also, um, uh, we, it was announced on Sunday, but um, we have begun putting some things together for this present truth. It is a podcast that we're doing that we started. I want to thank God for Trinity for helping me uh, with content and material and, and everything, keeping me focused. And what it is, you guys, is it is my opportunity to share more with Kingdom Life. It's going to get out there. If more people listen, that's fine. But I'm directing everything towards you guys. You guys got my heart. I am not thinking about the rest of the world. I'm thinking about you guys. And so they are getting blessed because of what I'm sharing with you guys. That's what this present truth is all about. And we're teaching the word of God. So there's some things that I'm sharing. Um, there's series and things that I went over and then we had to do something else and I didn't finish that. So the Lord just gave us a platform to share more of the things that we want. Now, what's the objective behind this? Uh, that the word of God would increase and that disciples will be multiplied. That's what we're doing. We're increasing the measure of input of God's word, intake of God's word that we're putting out there. And we're trusting that you guys will, will catch this and feed and eat and uh, then go do some exercise because, man, you can eat so much. And uh, that spiritual weight starts uh, weighing you down. So keep exercising and stay in faith. And by God's grace, um, the Lord will help us. That's all the time that we have uh, for tonight. By God's grace, we'll be back. Uh, on Sunday morning to share more of God's words with you. And until then, may God's riches be yours. See you next time. God bless. We appreciate you joining us. Feel free to contact us if the word of God affected your life today. For prayer, counsel, or questions, email office at gmail.com. Please make sure to subscribe and turn the post notifications on so that you will be notified when we are live for our services. See you again soon, and God bless.